it's winter and it's cold. So why is it your central heating always breaks down when it's like this and you just can't get a plumber? But is it a plumber you need? That's the big problem. Central heating systems are complicated, that they're very simple. They actually have got so many different things in them. Electronics, electric, plumbing, and probably gas. Four different experts. Let's have a look and see which one you need. Central heating, basically, or normally, is a system that pumps water around the house. In order to do that, it has to be switched on or off, like a light switch. You could have a thermostat on the wall, which is hardwired. Nowadays, radio controlled receivers and senders are, are kind of the norm. Inside here, this receiver's got a little aerial and it responds to what this says. If this is all live, you can see it's on. It doesn't need new batteries, but that could be the first thing, batteries. Second thing, let's call for heat. That's a term the plumber will use, call for heat. It's switched on, that little light's come on, and that's flashing, can you see it? And the green light came on. Now what's important here, I'm gonna turn it on again, and it's not so much I want you to watch the green light come on, I want you to listen for the green light to come on. Here we go again, listen carefully. So we're calling for heat. There you go, you heard that? That little green light, if it doesn't click, the fault's in there. Shh. Inside here, radio receiver, some pretty simple electronics. What goes wrong in there costs about 10 pence. On the back of the circuit board, there's one of these, a condenser. Just switch it out for a new one. I bought a pack of 10, because I'm switching them out pretty often. That's the thing. Now, if you've not got a soldering iron and you're not used to taking things apart, that is probably not something you're gonna do. But if you're pretty handy, two screws underneath, switch it off first at the mains, two screws underneath, lift it off, just literally clip the circuit board out and swap the old condenser for a new one, it will work. 10 to 50p repair. If you can't solder and you're not a Mr. Fix-It, the simple way of doing this is look for one of these on the, on the internet. You can buy them new, but you can get them second hand for about five quid. Maybe a tenner. Literally unscrew it, clip your new one on, and then all you've got to do is link your body up to the receiver. There are videos on that. So first fault could be batteries. Second fault is a simple 10p condenser inside there. Now, if you're not certain that it's that, you could always take this one off Take this one off, little screws, flick, lift, swap them over, put them back, switch the system back on, and then use the other call for heat, make it work with the one that you know works from this channel, and that will then switch this on. So you know that the channel's working, it was literally just this. Switch them back, that one works there, we know we've got to mend this one. Condenser or new receiver. So what does this do? This then switches something else on, the next thing in the system. So simple rules of safety. If you're gonna get inside the system or take anything apart, any lid off, turn the electric off. Do not work with the electricity on because everything we're talking about at the moment is electricity. It's switching like a light switch. So we know we actually use this to switch the system on or the term is call for heat. We're gonna switch it on we know that the little receiver up the top there is gonna do the switching and click and send the electric down. If it doesn't click, we've mended it by either getting a new one or switching out the 10p, 20p condenser. It's sending electric signal down to here. This will not surprise you that it's a tap. So on the side, there's a lever for manually switching the tap on. You can feel it as you push it down. That turns the tap on. But the electric should do it itself. How does something turn a tap on? It needs a motor. So inside here, we have a motor. No surprise that the valve is driven by a motor. When the electricity comes down, it makes the motor turn. It opens the valve like a tap. And it also switches a switch, which sends the electrical system up to the boiler. And the pump 
is just further along there. This will also send power to the pump, which should start running for us. So, if we know our send is working, this is the switch. If we know our receiver is working, the next thing we need to look at is this, the valve. You should be able to hear it turn round. You should be able to feel it's turning. And then you should hear the actual heat come on. If it doesn't, then this is the fault. And inside is a motor. Pretty simple. A motor. <laughs> it's going to cost you about eight quid, maybe 10, sometimes a little bit more. But inside that box is literally a motor and a switch. And this is what goes wrong goes wrong quite often. So, you would be turning the electricity off to work on this. You'd literally take this off with its one side on the, one screw on the side. The cover comes off and then the motor is exchanged. You will find, this is a Honeywell one, on the Honeywell site and on most of the manufacturer's sites, there's a very simple video to show you how to change the motor. And they will sell you a Honeywell motor but you can buy them on eBay and Amazon. So change the motor, put the lid back on. There is no plumbing involved. There is no water involved because you're just switching out a motor that sits on the top of the tap. You have not broken into the pipe. If you want to change the whole valve system as well as the Honeywell top, then that does need a plumber because you're going to need to undo the two sides and drain off the system. Like a puppeteer here. Okay, so in behind the cabinet, which I've just bought away from the wall. So when the valve switches on, it sends electricity to the boiler and to the pump. The pump turns, the water is flowing, it's going through the valve. If this pump is not working, it won't be spinning for any of the systems. It just gets red hot. A lot of pumps get really, really red hot um, and they're not turning. So it's getting the electricity, it's burning itself out. Now I can hear this one going already. There's a little trick that the plumbers do. They Sometimes they put a big screwdriver in there and go whoop, like that as it turns on. Turn it really quickly. It's, it's a bit like a starting motor though, so it's got a bit of a jerk on it. But that sometimes kick starts the motor. But if you've got a problem with the motor, job for the plumber. We're now into water engineering. That's a plumber's job. He would need to change this motor if it's not turning and pushing water and you can feel that, you can feel it turning and you can feel the hot water coming through. If there's no hot water coming through when you know everything else is working, pumps probably stop working. All pretty logical so far, you've got a switch that sends a signal. If it's remote, that's probably got batteries in. Check the batteries, it's sending. We've got a receiver, green light comes on, click, we know it's sending the signal further down the line. We've got that little valve, it's turning. We can hear it whir. We know the water is open to be sent. We hear the signal being sent up to the boiler. If nothing's happening with your boiler, it's time to get your boiler looked at. And I would suggest you look at a proper gas engineer that's got a certification for the make of boiler you're using, not a plumber. Get yourself a proper gas engineer because inside here are things that they will have been trained to do. They will be cleaning out pipes, valves, little bits that the plumber may never have been on the course to find out. This is the job of a proper certified, in this case, Worcester gas boiler engineer. Not someone who's just gas safe, someone who's worked on this particular boiler. Trust me, it might cost you twice as much. You'll get a proper job done. This bit's just a bit of very static piece of plumbing. Um, unlikely it would go wrong, but they're supposed to be cleaned out. So if you have a service, make sure you know you get a plumber who knows how to service this. It's literally just a cleaner. That's basically a water tank. They do sometimes cause a problem, but it will be after a good few years. And this valve at the top, we found a problem. That water pressure should be at least up to that red line, which the plumber has put a mark on and it's too low. So we're going to put some water in the tank. So, water engineering, let's go and have a look at the radiators. Now, if the radiator's not getting hot, we could have a number of problems here. Firstly, there's two valves, one at each end. You probably always use the one at that end. Why is this one here? It's here to balance up the systems because you've got two radiators, like two baby cuckoos in a nest, stealing the worms from the mum. One radiator's greedy, 
the other one not so fast so this one's getting all the heat and all the water and the one upstairs is getting no water well that's what this is for you can actually nip this down and make the water slightly more difficult to go through this route and you can open the one upstairs a little bit and make it easier for that to flow in which case you've actually taken the balance off this and put it upstairs so these ones at this end are to balance nip the greedy one down a bit and open the hard one up a bit if it's still not getting hot and your thermostat is up asking for heat it could be full of air if it's full of air you now need to look there's normally where is it let's have a look here it'll be so with the little bleed key you literally undo this nut just a bit it'll the air will come out then you'll have water with a rag watch it it could be very hot um, so with a rag catch the water clean it up nip the valve off nice and tight so now the air is probably going to be in the one upstairs the air goes to the top so the radiator up on the highest floor is probably the one full of air doesn't hurt to go around every single radiator and release the air if we've still got problems with this rad and it's still not doing its job if it's old change it the new radiators are much much better this is actually a double fin double radiator it's probably very good this thermostat should be set at the temperature you want the room so you can have the system sending hot water but this radiator is probably going no thank you because the temperature has been set down a bit but you want the other room warmer so the radiator in that is turned up a bit so they could be set at different temperatures but if you want to balance them turn them all up to full heat and then balance the water flow using the other valve at the other end and then set this back at the temperature you want 